Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. Today's video is my July energy update. Anyway, what else has been going on energy wise? And quite, quite a few things to be honest. Um, I'm progressing looking at air to air heating and cooling, so air conditioning systems. I've had um, Octopus Energy round to do an air source heat pump survey and I'll do a separate video on that because there's enough detail in that to explain why I'm not going with an air source heat pump from Octopus Energy. I've had the survey and they've actually declined to quote, but that's not why I'm not going with them. I wasn't going to anyway after what I heard and uh, it definitely needs a separate video for me to explain my reasoning why it's not for me and I don't want one of their air source heat pumps. I'm very pro air source heat pumps but hopefully my reasoning will make sense. Anyway what else has been going on? Well the big headline I suppose is the weather. Um, we've had 40 plus degrees here in Norfolk uh, in the shade. Um, I put a thermostat outside and it went to 52 degrees as the sun came around and actually went on the thermostat. The temperatures have been incredible. Is it global warming? Well, the trend um, for more extreme weather events seems to be true, and the trend of temperatures going up seems to be accurate. So if I look at graphs and data, which I do, I would say yes. I'd say uh, there is a climate issue, there is a climate emergency, and uh, what we experienced isn't going to be the only event. Today is about 26, 27 degrees, hence I'm outside. It's a very sunny, very hot day indoors in the house air conditioning is going full blast it has been since 6 30 in the morning running from the battery and now it's running from solar power so indoors is nice and cool for later um, i'm happy just to burn the energy and run the air conditioning all day to keep the house cool for the moments that we need it when we go in seems like a bit of a waste but if you don't have it running all the time the air con won't get the house down from the higher temperature that it'll build up to down to the temperature you want so it's it's better to run it more continuously to keep it at the right temperature solar panel wise we've done incredibly well this month it's not quite a record but um, we're over a megawatt of generation but I'll cover the details later Electric car, no changes on that. We haven't got our second electric car yet. Kia still haven't come back to us about the 2023 model of the eSoul and nothing else has sprung to mind um, that we're interested in. I, I did see um, a couple of mockers lately, the um, Mocker Electric from Vauxhall and it's a bit of a funky looking car. We used to hate the look of the old Mocker but the new one, it's got some very modern looks to it and very not very voxel look looking i would say i think it looks quite attractive and i was trying to get susan to agree to go for a test drive but no 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 she's not interested it's kia soul or nothing at the moment so um, we're still waiting for an e-soul to become available or um, the new e-soul to come out the electric mini um, that's been going really well but we have got a couple of warranty items that we're taking in on friday for the sunroof has suddenly stopped working and won't open and there's a very unusual squeak coming from the car after a journey as you pull up and you turn the car off there's like a very faint horn sounding in the background but i've been working out it's not a horn it's not an electronic sound it sounds like a squeak from the locking mechanism of the car on the passenger side as it unlocks so it's going in for those two items on Friday. Bit of a shame because otherwise it's been fault free, rattle free and uh, absolutely a fantastic car. And we're up to 4,000 miles we've done in the car now, which is incredible because the first Mini I had I only did 4,500 miles um, in the entire time that I had it. I'd just like to say a big thank you to Octopus Energy for contacting me directly about my previous video where I was pointing out some faults and failings in their um, quotation for my Octopus Go renewal. And uh, they've been very, very good about it. I had a couple of phone calls from a couple of people um, sounding very thankful for me pointing it out and very keen to get it fixed very very quickly so some of the issues were as they described a copy problem where it's basically the typing on their web pages wasn't accurate but some of it's programmatic and they've admitted to those issues and uh, they're on the case they're on the ball trying to get it to work they explained some of the issues to me that uh, it could be that my house is classified incorrectly and hence the estimate of kilowatt hours on the flexible price was inaccurate they're looking into that and how widespread that is for other customers as well um, um, they're also looking at how they calculated my Go renewal. So for me this month it's been an extremely busy month but not installing new stuff that I can tell you about. It's an extremely busy period of the research, investigation and ordering stuff because I have ordered 
a Mixergy hot water tank and I have ordered an air to air air conditioning system that will provide heating in the winter as well but I'm not at the level and time to actually share the details of those with you so lots of investigation lots of progress for me this month and lots more videos to come explaining my reasons for going down these paths but it's probably time now to go through some of the data to show you what our solar system has provided for us and how we've used that energy and I've got to say the amount of solar power we have on the roof is now beyond the point of being adequate for us. It is in excess of what we need. I, I do find that we've got so much solar power, I'm not craving to use it and consume it because I know I've got more later. I've got no, I've got more to use later. So I'm much more relaxed about when to charge the battery, much more relaxed about what charging rate to put into the car and how quickly to heat our hot water. I'm not in a rush to use every ounce of solar power there is. And I'm definitely more the tortoise than the hare approach at the moment. So yeah it's another month of having no grid usage um, lots of generation and uh, lots of energy to use for all the things that we want it for so anyway here are the stats for the month of july hope you enjoy them let's start with generation that's 1205 kilowatt hours for the month of july 1.2 megawatt hours the fourth month in a row where we've had over a megawatt hour looking at the individual days the lowest generation was just 13 kilowatt hours the highest generation was 52 kilowatt hours on the 10th of July, and we averaged a whopping 38.8 kilowatt hours across the entire month. Looking at our solar edge array, that's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, that generated 340 kilowatt hours, more than any other July that we've had so far. In fact, that was more than a couple of June's uh, data as well. So this July really was not a record breaker, but a really good one. Comparing to previous Julys, 592 kilowatt hours from the 3.9 kilowatt Solus array. That's the best we've had in any July. The same goes for Solar Edge, as I just said, 340 kilowatt hours was better. And we had another 272 kilowatt hours from the new array that we put in this year that obviously we haven't got any data in previous years for. Grid import for the month, that's the lowest I've ever seen at 1.89 kilowatt hours. 1.89 for the entire month. Um, I must say though, we were going to get to about 1.4 kilowatt hours for the month until the very last day when we had uh, 0.41. It's, it's funny looking at this sort of level of detail at 0.41, half a kilowatt hour for a day doesn't seem like a lot. But when you're starting to look at uh, fractions, it suddenly seems like a huge amount. And that's what's really pleased me, the realisation that uh, half a kilowatt hour now seems like a huge amount. So I know my system is really working well. Just as a reminder, April was 43.7 kilowatt hours, May 9.34 kilowatt hours, June just 3.9 kilowatt hours, and as I said, July 1.89 kilowatt hours. Winter's on its way though, those numbers will be going up soon. In monetary terms, that's £8.05 for the month on go. If we'd have been on the Agile tariff, it would have been less at £7.17, but that's because the standing charge is lower on Agile. The average price would have been 34.77 pence on Agile, but of course that doesn't matter because I'm not using very many kilowatt hours. Exporting back to the grid though, that's another story. 593 kilowatt hours, quite high again this month. And that's almost half of what we've generated we're giving back to the grid. So that's good news we've got plenty. Good news that we don't need any more. Not so good news because I'm not on a smart export guarantee tariff yet. So I'm not getting paid for it, but wonderful for the future. My energy app, that data is a little bit different there. It's only showing 1.18 megawatt hours generation. But the piece of data that I really like on this screen, 100% green. Consumption figure of 609 kilowatt hours. Where did we use all of that energy? And the first big item, the Zappi, of course, from solar, 143.5 kilowatt hours. The Eddy's the next one, but that's split into several figures here because we had the Eddy changed. That was the box that was delivered in the video that I showed about a month ago. So we've replaced an Eddy under warranty because it had a fault. And this month we've seen on the old Eddy, 92 kilowatt hours. On the new Eddy for solar, 20.9 kilowatt hours. And from the grid, basically that's where we boosted 
and that was actually boosting using solar energy but it still records it as grid 5.6 kilowatt hours the other three items there the spare roaming plug the lounge radiator and the hall radiator they're not really heaters they're not radiators they're the air conditioning units that we've had on during the month of july total of 136 kilowatt hours and what mistake did I make when we changed the eddy? I forgot to take some pictures of the data, so I haven't got the data from the previous eddy. Thank goodness, though, Home Assistant was recording the data for me. The Mini Electric, that's been doing really well this month. We've done 607 miles, covered a total of nearly 4,000 miles. I think it's 3,980 that we've done so far. And uh, miles per kilowatt hour has been brilliant this month. It's been so warm. As soon as the temperature gets into the 20s, we easily get five, five and a half miles per kilowatt hour. And on some days when we're heading into the city, it's even been as high as six miles per kilowatt hour. No public charging this month either, so all of those 607 miles have been for free on solar power. As always, I do like to hear from you all. I like to hear what sort of generation you're getting, how you're getting on with import and export, and what you're doing with your electric cars. So leave me a comment below. Really do like to see those messages. And if you haven't got solar and a battery in an EV yet, I hope the videos like this and the data within helps inspire you and make you see what you could be doing to help the environment and to help get those bills down as well. Free motoring, free air conditioning, free heating in winter. You've got to love it. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for liking the video. And if you haven't, please click like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the EB Puzzle. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.